Hi and welcome back to our Dreamweaver tutorial. In this video we're going to go ahead and continue working on our contact form for our website and specifically in this video we're going to add the validation script that we're going to use um, to our form. Now there are two different types of validation scripts that you can use um, with forms. You can use a validation script that either uses JavaScript and jQuery or you can use a validation script that uses PHP. Now for 99% of the people out there um, it's not going to matter whether you use a PHP script or a JavaScript jQuery script. They're both going to offer you the same uh, benefits. The difference however is that oftentimes PHP validation scripts are a little bit harder to configure because at a much more advanced level uh, PHP scripts can perform more advanced validation than a JavaScript jQuery form um, could. You know, for example, um, a PHP script, when you enter in the zip code, could automatically look up the correct state and city and fill those values in for you. Whereas you really couldn't do something like that with JavaScript um, or jQuery. But again, most of the time what um, individuals that are working with uh, forms on websites want is um, simply to be able to make some fields required and to make sure other types of fields have specific types of information in them. For example, our email field, we would want um, that to have an email address entered into, not something else. Um, so we're going to use a JavaScript jQuery um, form validation tool with this um, page. Now, if you go to Google, you can search for jQuery validation script or jQuery form validator, um, and you will find um, dozens and dozens and dozens of these scripts um, are available for you to download. Um, the one that we're going to use in this video um, is the one that comes with my framework package. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize Dreamweaver here. And you can see we're back at the desktop now. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go into my framework folder. And then I'm going to go into the Timothy framework folder. And into the JS folder. And finally into the plugins folder. And the folder that you want is the one titled Form Validator Files. So we want to go ahead and copy that uh, by either using Control C or right clicking and selecting Copy. And then go into our project folder and just go ahead and paste that fo uh, folder in there. Now, once you've done that, you can go ahead and close this window and go back into Dreamweaver and we'll begin setting up the form or the uh, files. So we can see here are our form validator files. If you don't see that folder there, you just go ahead and click the refresh button right there and it should appear for you. And there are three folders here. We're not going to use any images in this example, but we do have the basic CSS sheet and the JavaScript file. And we need to move those into the appropriate folder. That's the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do. So I'm going to go ahead and drag validate.css into my CSS folder. And I'm going to drag validate.js into my JavaScript folder. And now the only thing that you should have left is this validator setup file right here. And we're going to go ahead and use that um, um, to see how to configure this page. So I'm going to go ahead and go into code view here. And I'm going to scroll up because I'm going to need to be in the head section um, of my document. Now the first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that you have jQuery um, loading on your page. And this should already be set up from the banner slider that we did earlier. Um, and you can see I do have my JavaScript or my uh, jQuery library loading right there. After that, you're going to want to go ahead and copy this line of text into 
your contact page. And you can see here I'm in the um, editable region head. Um, so we want to go ahead and go find that location in your um, template file. And um, or I'm sorry, in your contact file. And then go ahead and enter this script value in. Now, this script value here, the source, obviously needs to point to whatever folder you placed validate.js inside of. And the same thing is true here. You need to make sure that that value is pointing to the correct path for the validate.css file. And one way, again, that's very easy to um, see if these paths are set up correctly is to come up here to your related files section. And you'll see I've got validate.js and validate.css appearing here. If they don't appear here, just simply go to the view menu and select related file options and refresh related files. And these two items should appear here. Now, again, just because the names appear here doesn't mean that the paths that you've entered in down here are correct. All this indicates is that that file is being pointed to. So you need to actually click on validate.js and validate.css and make sure that a file actually opens up and that you don't get an error that says that the file doesn't exist. So now that we've got our, um, our two links set up, we now need to go ahead and activate the um, script. And you're going to activate the script using this code right here. And if we go into your validator setup text file, you'll see that that's available there for you just to copy and paste that into um, your form. Now, you're going to notice here in apostrophes or in single quotes, it has a hash mark and my contact form here. You need to change this value here to whatever the ID is that you're using on your contact form. And if I scroll down here and find my form tag, I can scroll over and I can see there's the ID, my contact form. One thing that people um, sometimes um, get confused on at this point is this form is also inside of a div that I gave an ID contact form so I could target it. You don't want the ID on the div. You need the ID that's on your form tag. So if you haven't placed an ID on your form tag you'll need to go ahead and create that just like this is right here and then make sure that the ID matches right here. And again, since this is an ID, we're going to go ahead and use a uh, hashtag right there. So now we're almost ready to go ahead and um, use our validation um, script. The last thing that you need to do is you need to actually indicate how you want the script to validate the different fields that are on your form. And you can see if I scroll down here, I'm looking at my form again. And I'm not looking at the top area here. I'm going to come down to the actual fields themselves. And you're going to go ahead and put an attribute called data validate on the input tags that you want to validate. And this attribute follows the exact same format that um, any other attribute does. You have the attribute name followed by an equal sign. And then inside of quotation marks, you're going to put the value for that attribute. Now, you're going to see the value that I have here is required. And after that, I actually have a semicolon. On the second field for email, I also made that required by using this value. 
but I also indicate that this should be an email field, that this should be an email field. And again, um, there are a lot of different validation methods that are out there. Um, HTML5 has its own specific um, validation tools that are built into it. But since there are still a lot of browsers out there that um, don't recognize the HTML5 attributes. Most people prefer to use a script like a JavaScript jQuery script this here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and ensure that this is both filled in by making it required and we're going to make sure that it is an email, a valid email address that is um, has been entered in there. And you could put this attribute onto every field inside of your form. You just need to know the correct values to use here. And remember to separate the values with semicolons. So at the end of every value, you're going to go ahead and put a semicolon. Now, the question you're probably asking yourself at this point is, OK, what are the different options that I can place in here? And again, if you come back to our validate setup uh, txt file, you're going to see the basic value options that you can use right here. Required, you can make something, uh, label something an alphanumeric field, an email field, a date field, and you can also set the minimum and maximum characters um, for a value um, in a form field. You know, for instance, we may want to make sure that the name field has a minimum of 10 characters um, that's been entered into um, it. Or if there's a message field, you may want to put um, a minimum and maximum um, number of characters on uh, that type of field. So we've gone ahead now and we've set up everything that we need to to have this uh, validation um, working. So the next thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and upload my website to my server and then let's go ahead and test the validation in um, a browser. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to come up to my root folder here and right click and select put and I'm going to put the entire site that'll make sure that all the necessary files um, that weren't there before our script and our CSS file are uploaded and that our contact form is um, also updated and then I'm going to go ahead and come into Chrome and I'm going to go ahead and go to my website and you'll go to whatever domain name you're using and I'm going to go to my contact form and here's my contact form you can see when I hover over a field I get a little tooltip up that tells me about that field. And you can see here it says when I hover over email, it says um, the field is required and that it requires a valid email address. If I tab from field to field, if I've created a validation error, you can see that the field is highlighted in red. And again, the tooltip will tell you what you need to do in here. And let's say I go ahead and enter in a value in here. You'll see that that field turns green for me. And we'll go ahead and put in a valid email address here. I don't need to put in a phone number or a message because I didn't put any validation rules on there. And I'll click submit. And it takes me to my contact or uh, my thank you page and it sent my contact form to me. Also, if you um, click submit here and you haven't completely filled out the form, it will also bring up a little tooltip down here that says that you need to fill out the entire available um, form. If you want to uh, format your form differently, um, you can. Um, in this case, because the tooltips really don't have very much room here, I may give myself a little bit more space in between my fields. Again, I can do that with my uh, CSS. And um, if you want to change the way the tooltips look when um, they come up, 
that's in the validate.css file right here. And you can see all sorts of options that you can set in here, such as valid and invalid options. And again, you should know enough about CSS to, at this point, to go in there and change the colors and the font sizes and the spacing and whatnot uh, that you need for that. So that's all there is to setting up a validation script for um, your form. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and um, set up the drop down menus that um, are on our project. And if I actually go to our completed project website here, manchestertemplate.info, you can see here that we're going to have some drop downs on not all, but just some of our menu options here in our top navigation section. So that's what we'll do in the next video. I'll see you then.